Welcome to the Unapologetic Podcast. I'm Michelle Capobianco. I'm the CEO of Pancreatic Cancer Canada, and I'll be your host today. I'm so excited you've joined us for the inaugural episode of this podcast. You might be wondering how we chose the name Unapologetic for our podcast. Simply put, it's how we approach everything we do at Pancreatic Cancer Canada. From our brand and the honesty with which we talk about this disease, to the bold and frankly trailblazing ways we are working to raise the rate of pancreatic cancer survival. Being unapologetic is ingrained in the very culture of PCC because sorry doesn't save lives. With each episode, we're gonna take you behind the scenes of pancreatic cancer research. We're gonna offer some candid conversations with business leaders and members of our community and introduce you to the most influential change makers in the pancreatic cancer landscape. One such change maker is our first guest, Dr. Anish Kirpalani. Anish is a radiologist and chair of medical imaging research at St. Michael's Hospital and an associate professor in the Department of Medical Imaging at the University of Toronto. He is also, and most importantly, the chair of Pancreatic Cancer Canada's board of directors. Welcome, Anish. Thank you, Michelle. It's great to be here, and thanks for having me uh, on this uh, inaugural exciting podcast for Pancreatic Cancer Canada. It's great to be able to speak about this amazing organization. Thank you, Anish. I'm so glad you're here. When I was considering what the first episode of this podcast should include, I thought it might be great to have a candid conversation with you and talk about the type of organization this was six and a half years ago when I joined and a little bit longer when you joined. Um, and the decisions that you and I made to bring it to where it is now, which is frankly a very different organization. So let's dive right on in there. PCC was founded by a small group of volunteers in Ontario in 2005. They had lost loved ones to the disease and they wanted to raise awareness and to help fund research. And they did this through golf tournaments, selling pansies, purple lights, a lot of grassroots events, and a lot of good ways to get key community organizers involved. In 2015, the PCC Board of Directors decided they wanted to take more of a business approach to raising money, and they hired me. So my background has always been in corporate fundraising. I spent a decade at uh, Easter Seals Research Institute and then 10 years with the MS Society of Canada. And I have been the CEO of, of PCC for, as I said, six and a half years. And that corporate lens is what I wanted to bring to PCC. I will say though, I'm completely honest, the idea of taking on a disease with a mortality rate of 92% and one that hadn't changed in 40 years was very, it was scary. I mean, that was a big challenge to take on and say, I have the skills and knowledge to, to run this. So I quickly knew that I needed to bring in some really key people around me. And I would say that the board was the most important thing that I needed to, to, to reach out and develop. And so one of the first people I spoke with uh, was a member of our medical advisory committee, and that was Anish. And so Anish and I sat down and had lunch and I said, look, this, this organization, we need to change it. We need to revolutionize it. What is it that you do for the organization? Why did you join and what can we do together? And so Anish, do you want to sort of talk about what you then had to say? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, I was sitting, as you know, on, on this medical advisory board or medical advisory committee for pancreatic cancer Canada. And I think, and that was around, as you say, 2015. And I think I'll just give some context as to how, how did I get there? You know, I'm a radiologist, uh, as, uh, as you know, I'm my, my career is focused in abdominal radiology and MRI specifically. Um, I'm, uh, an academic radiologist with a clinical education, research, administrative, um, duties. You know, I, I see the pancreas on imaging of many patients every day. And I had uh, the misfortune of having any radiologist's worst nightmare come true, which is uh, diagnosing a loved one with something bad. Um, uh, you know, I diagnosed my, my own mom with pancreas cancer. Um, I'll never forget the date. It was April 15th, 2008. Uh, I was in the US in private practice. Uh, and that experience brought me back home to Toronto. Um, 
she was operated on. She was one of the few uh, lucky patients uh, because we actually had caught it fairly early um, to actually have uh, the opportunity to have surgery. Um, you know, so there was some fortunate things that happened early. Uh, unfortunately, it recurred. Um, we had, uh, you know, a great, um, actually high quality of life, 15 months um, with her, uh, you know, until she passed away in 2009. Toward the end of that journey, um, I reached out to Pancreatic Cancer Canada. I heard a little bit about them. They were, as you said, a grassroots organization, uh, raising awareness, trying to have, uh, trying to provide some small, uh, you know, uh, but significant levels of patient support. And uh, I spoke to them a little bit. Uh, and they kept in touch with me. I think they were compelled by my story, which was this um, intersection of um, a professional connection and a personal connection with pancreas cancer. In the meantime, I had joined St. Michael's Hospital as an academic radiologist. Uh, and so over the next few years, um, three, four, five years, you know, they put me on a medical advisory board, really with with pancreas cancer experts, people like Steve Gallinger and Malcolm Moore, uh, you know, who knew a lot more and were a lot focused about pancre in pancreas cancer than I was. So I didn't really feel that was a great fit in terms of my role or what I could do uh, for the organization. But I wanted to help and I told them that I wanted to help them perhaps in outreach. Um, and so that's kind of, you know, I participated a little bit in, in reviews of, of research projects that were going to be funded by um, the grassroots kind of time period of Pancreas Cancer Canada. And so I guess when you and I met uh, at what became our regular uh, meeting place, lunch restaurant in downtown Toronto, um, you were just coming on board and, you know, being asked to professionalize, uh, you know, some of the tasks in the organization. And I think what I probably told you is that uh, I think you asked me what I wanted to do and how it was going. And I said, um, I think I said I wanted to just step away and leave uh, because I didn't think I was doing anything. Um, and I think what emerged out of that discussion was uh, that perhaps there was a, a better way or a, you know, um, a more appropriate fit for my uh, contributions than uh, what I was doing already with Pancreatic Cancer Canada. We, we talked about education um, and, uh, you know, a little bit more research oversight. We talked about physician outreach. Uh, it was interesting that, you know, um, some of the things that I was learning even in my, um, in my uh, you know, academic physician role were things that actually could translate over um, into uh, board governance and into, um, you know, involvement with the organization. Uh, I told you that that primary care and family doctors had to understand this disease better. Um, and uh, I think you suggested to me that perhaps my role as a physician and with these personal and professional experiences could be better served on a on a board of directors rather than a rather than where I was now. Uh, and so um, what happened was uh, I joined the board in 2016 uh, and, um, you know, we worked on improving um, initially the accuracy of the medical information we were giving the community, uh, education piece, uh, awareness of pancreas cancer, and yeah. we needed to shore up how we were doing research. You know, I, I started acting as a liaison, uh, with somebody who, you know, as somebody who understood the medical world. And that's how I think, you know, this period of change started. Yeah, that's exactly what happened, but I would suggest that you're quite modest because, and he's just an extremely successful entrepreneur outside of his work at St. Mike's and the U of T. And in fact, he's about to launch his own health podcast so that we're going to be following that. And, and as he discusses various issues that are current and including obviously pancreas, which will be close to his heart. So that for sure was a turning point, bringing Anish onto the board. It, uh, it sort of started to set the direction of the tone that we wanted to be innovative, that we wanted to be entrepreneurial. And I think a lot of charities talk about now, it's kind of a bit of a buzz phrase. We're <laughs> going to operate as a business. It sounds good, right? And you get kind of excited about it. Um, but there's a lot to that. And if we really, we dug in hard on that one, we said, that is exactly what we're going to do. And so we're going to look hard and we're going to look at the ROI. Where's the return on investment in each thing we're doing? And we talked about making a profit, um, which is something not for profits by our very name. Don't talk about, we need to make a profit. We need to be run well. And so we need to have net at the end that we can then invest into research and other projects. And so if we're a for-profit organization, 
how are we going to run? We're going to hire the right people, which means we're going to pay them decently. We're going to give them benefits. We're going to have decent equipment, decent office space. And so all of those things were had to become part of our infrastructure, um, which of course takes money and that's a big lift. And so we were fortunate that there were a series of events um, that were in fact unfortunate events that led to our being able to grow. And I think one of the, the key catalysts for all of our growth um, or the vast majority of our growth, I would say, would be the unfortunate passing of Joe Goodbaum. And Joe was a senior executive at TELUS and he was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. His family reached out and then his TELUS family reached out and said, what can we do? Joe very quickly passed away. Um, as so often with this disease, we hear about people who are diagnosed and, and as I said, pass in 12 weeks, it can be very sudden. And Joe's passing was sudden. Uh, but TELUS and his family really rallied around and TELUS executive came on our board. In fact, to this day, we have a TELUS executive on our board. Um, and that's been a six year partnership. It's raised over a million dollars. And it's been an unbelievable way for his personal and business family to pay tribute to Joe. And I often tell TELUS and I, and I tell Joe's family that that changed everything for us. And his death, unfortunately, led to a real movement in pancreatic cancer. So many more people became aware of it. So many people are getting checked. Much more money is being raised for research. And so that was one of the big moments that I would really say was a turning point. Wouldn't you say, Anish? Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, you know, you're totally right, Michelle. Um, I, I think that also because of how the TELUS community loved Joe so much, yeah. how much he meant to them and how, and how, you know, TELUS came aboard as a partner with Pancreatic Cancer Canada. I think that was actually the start of the full scale transformation of the board of directors. Um, and, you know, uh, a funny thing started happening. It started mirroring what happened at the board, started mirroring, you know, what was happening at the staff level, um, you know, under you at, at Pancreatic Cancer Canada. Uh, the board started transforming uh, from, you know, um, what it needed to be early on, a grassroots fundraising board, a volunteer, uh, you know, a board composed of volunteers from, you know, from various different walks of life who were affected by pancreas cancer, an operationally heavy type of board. Uh, those are all crucial things when you're starting out an organization and you don't have full-time staff as, as was the case for Pancreatic Cancer Canada in the years prior to you coming aboard. But it started transforming into, you know, uh, a board that was developing, that was growing up, um, co a corporate partnerships fundraising board, you know, uh, a board with people who some of whom did have and some of whom did not have a personal connection to pancreas cancer, but were brought in for their their, their professional roles. And uh, one thing that I'm particularly proud of is that we started transforming, uh, and this was a vision that I had, um, transforming from an operational board into a strategic board uh, and moving that you know, uh, goal towards strategy uh, was an important goal uh, of mine, um, you know, when I joined and then when I subsequently became chair. Uh, and, you know, I think just to speak to what you said about, um, you know, thinking about uh, a nonprofit like this as a business, one thing I think that uh, is very unique, and as you suggested, it's not just talk with us, uh, is that there's a very strong entrepreneurial spirit of, with Pancreatic Cancer Canada. Um, I find that a great fit for myself. Uh, my career has consisted of building things. I'm good at building things. I've built clinical programs, um, both in hospital and outpatient uh, environments. I've built research programs, business units, um, you know, at the hospital and, uh, and healthcare companies. Uh, I've, I've helped to grow um, a few healthcare companies. Um, and I felt very at home uh, with the dynamic uh, growth oriented spirit of pancreatic cancer Canada. And I realized that this was very unique, uh, I think among nonprofit organizations. Thank you. Thank you. It, it, it was true being able to bring in staff and I brought in a lot of people that I'd worked with at the MS society, people whose work ethic I really admired and I knew would share my passion. And that that's been, it's been a game changer. I also, when I look back, I think about um, being introduced to Mickey Jackman. And yeah. Mickey ha was working at Google, but he had, in fact, worked with Joe Goodbaum at TELUS. 
Um, and Mickey wanted to get involved and Google got involved. Um, Mickey today is head of business and operations for Google Chrome in the U.S. and is on our PCC board, but he's also on our U.S. board, Pank One. He's chair of that and has been part of that expansion. And so that was another outcropping or outgrowth from the TELUS relationship. The next one um, was, in fact, getting Chris Andrews on board. And Chris was the president of TELUS's advertising agency. And so that was the next connection we made. And, and to this day, he's on our board. They've given us some amazing advertising that I think has been cutting edge that talks about pancreatic cancer in a very different way. They gave us our, our tagline that we've raised enough sympathy and it's time to raise survival rates. And that's really driven the direction we've gone in. So each of these moments have really led to us creating a, a solid foundation so that we could jump on opportunities as they came and quite frankly, as we created them. And so it's yeah. brought us some amazing partnerships. I look at Mickey introduced us to the brand unit at Google. They came up with a fundraising campaign. Uh, they then introduced us to the branded entertainment network, uh, BAN, as we like to call it, an amazing company based in the U.S. that does influencer marketing. It does product placement across streams. It does a, a wide range of things. It's, in fact, owned by Bill Gates. Their president got excited about our mission and talking about pancreatic cancer and how rare it was and the difference that he could make. He is now on our board as well. <laughs> um, so we brought in such key people and it's, it's, um, it's, it's been an unbelievable experience. And Anish, do you want to talk a bit about the U.S. expansion? Yeah, I mean, before I do that, I'll, I'll just... Um... You know, I'll just reiterate what you said. I, I think, uh, yeah, like you, like you said, Mickey Jackman was a, a great addition. I felt like when, I felt like Mickey and I, who joined the board around the same time, um, were kind of, you know, the new blood on the board of directors. We both kind of had a vision for where, you know, this could go as a board. Um, and when I was asked uh, to be chair um, by Michael Clarfield and supported by yourself, um, and supported by the rest of the board uh, in 2018, I I wanted Mickey as as uh, the vice chair. We worked very well together, and I felt like we had two you know very important angles covered in this you know developing board of directors. One was uh, this medical leadership and you know and and uh, and physician and physician administration uh, you know leadership and moving into the role that uh, that you know a physician can play in governance. Um, combined with uh, the experience and network and, um, you know, and resources and strength of a, of a you know, a big corporate, um, uh, you know, outstanding leader in Mickey uh, with the strength of Google behind him. Uh, and so I, I think that, as you said, that led to a whole bunch of things. Um, you know, it helped uh, us uh, set strategy uh, for, uh, for, for PCC. Um, you know, we we moved to be, you know, to really uh, not just attach lip service to these ideas, but you know, make PCC a national organization first. National. I'll get to the U.S. in a second. Um, make it collaborative. Uh, involve you know multiple sites across Canada. Um, make it more strategic, as we said. Um, make people understand what was unique about pancreatic cancer um, a, a, as a disease entity. Uh, and then, you know, one of the best experiences I've had as board chair uh, and on the board period was in 2018, later in 2018, when, um, when, you know, we participated in this Google Zoo School in Toronto and Mickey was, a you know, a big part in, in helping secure that in Toronto and getting Pancreatic Cancer Canada um, as a beneficiary. And this idea, this marketing idea uh, of the eulogy campaign that we, you know, that where we moved to looking at social media influencers uh, and how they could help us raise funds uh, and in fact, raise awareness. Uh, that's where that all came from. Uh, while, you know, lots of nonprofits were focused on the traditional gala events and single fundraisers and, and, and traditional ways of, of raising funds uh, and, um, you know, and supporting uh, initiatives, we were moving into the new world, I feel, a few years early. And that led to the involvement with Ben, as you said, 
um, you know, our board and our organization took a big entrepreneurial risk. We committed, you know, um, six figure amounts of U.S. dollars to that initiative uh, and it led to U.S. expansion uh, and it and it was a big part of our further growth. We were growing in Canada. We grew to be truly national and then we've branched out to become, um, you know, a big presence in the U.S. as well. Uh, it started by needing an avenue to receive funds in the U.S. because we were we were raising funds through this um, social media campaign uh, and with the help of Ben, which really, um, you know, which really believed in, in Pancreas Cancer Canada. And they really, as you said, uh, were excited to work with us. But a funny thing happened along the way. In addition to raising funds, we started raising a lot of awareness in, in various different social media platforms, uh, as you know very well. And uh, this has just led to, you know, fueling our growth even further. Yeah, it really has. And I we have to be true to the name of our podcast about being truly unapologetic. And so um, let's throw it out there that we went to several other charities and said, we have this amazing opportunity. Uh, Google's on board, Ben's on board, but there's a, there's money that needs to be put into this. And could we share? And, and the offer at the time was share in the expenses and then share equally in the profit, which I thought was a fabulous offer offer. And if you've got an entrepreneurial spirit, it works. Uh, nobody wanted to do it. Literally right. nobody wanted to do it. And I had to come back to you and the rest of the board and say, we need to pony up all the money. And we took a big risk. We took a big risk. took a huge risk. And, yeah. uh, and then along came COVID and then along yeah. came COVID. Right. And we were, I was panicking. I thought, oh my God, we've taken this big leap. We've, we've invested this money and now no one's going to hear about us. And um, I remember one of the, the early events we had, um, there was quite a low uh, guesstimate of how much money was going to be raised. Um, and that low estimate had been made before COVID hit. And when COVID hit and the event still happened, it raised three times the money that it was, uh, that they thought they would. And so we really knew then that this partnership was solid uh, and that we could make money. And it carried us through COVID. I mean, when all of those sort of normal standard events, to your point of how most charities raise funds, um, when those walks couldn't happen, when those golf tournaments couldn't happen, right. we had this and this carried us through. And in fact, during COVID, during 2021 and 2020, we were able to launch two, one national and one international clinical trials. And that's just unheard of. And uh, we're unapologetically thrilled about that. We took a risk we raised money and we're able to move it forward. And so I'm really proud of that. And Anish, I think you should be really proud of it. The board should be. You know, when it comes to speaking about um, COVID and how, um, you know, how we handled Pancreatic Cancer Canada as an organization during COVID, uh, you know, I think we spoke earlier about um, the fact that I, I feel like we were a little bit ahead of the game, even back in 2018, uh, moving into, uh, you know, online platforms, social media. Um, but when, um, but when COVID came, I'm so proud of the fact that we were, we were really ready. Uh, we were streamlined. We were already diversified in, in revenue stream. We are moving online, as I said. Um, and I think it's no small thing that we were able to launch, uh, as you said, Michelle, two clinical trials during COVID, um, uh, you know, uh, Neopank one, uh, pass one, uh, that is incredible. Uh, you know, um, you couldn't even buy socks or toilet paper, uh, during, or in, in the early stages of the pandemic. And here we were, um, ready to go, uh, starting clinical trials. I can tell you in addition to, <laughs> you know, uh, consumer goods, um, in the, in the research world, in the medical research world, uh, everywhere else funds were being turned off for non COVID research, you know, or uh, funding agencies and organizations were diverting, uh, you know, uh, research funding all toward COVID related research. And here was PCC starting something new in pancreas cancer in an area that, you know, um, you know, was going to help pancreatic cancer patients. I think it's, uh, you know, I think it was an incredible achievement. I also should mention our partners because for the past one trial, we are partnered with the Lust Garden Foundation, who are the largest contributors to pancreatic cancer research in the U.S., and Stand Up to Cancer, which is an amazing organization um, across the globe, actually. They've been incredible partners, and we continue to partner with them. 
there have been many examples. Uh, the one you uh, outlined is is just one of them. When we actually, you know, uh, reached out to other organizations, um, both in pancreatic cancer, you know, in cancer in general, uh, in the nonprofit industry, um, to talk about our ideas, to potentially collaborate and, and partner. And a lot of times we were, um, you know, um, organizations didn't want to, uh, you know, commit to the ideas that we were putting forth and, and uh, because they were, uh, I suppose, bold and, um, and, we, and we were risk takers and <laughs> they were unapologetic. And I think we learned how different we were compared to other nonprofit organizations simply because we wanted to, you know, push forward ideas that, that uh, were new and, uh, and, and, you know, ended up being fantastic initiatives. Uh, and I think a lot of these organizations might wish that they did come along with us. Um, you know, uh, I think there's so many things that, that we should be proud of um, with, with regards to our board and with regards to our organization. You and I work so well together as CEO and board chair. Um, you we know, extended your term because of that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you It for was doing so that. good. Yeah. We wanted to just keep on going. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, the other interesting thing for me is that uh, it's just the concept of being a physician and leading a nonprofit uh, board of directors. I, I think that, um, and COVID has highlighted this, actually, I'll talk about that in a second, but physician leadership outside of clinical medicine, I think is so important. It's important for the world to see us um, as doctors, um, you know, involved in other aspects of society, uh, in addition to, um, uh, to the important clinical work that we do. Um, and, and board governance is a place that it can actually lend itself well um, to doctors. And I feel like Pancreatic Cancer Canada really gave me a place to grow in that respect. Um, but I think it was important. I, I think, you know, PCC has, um, uh, has, you know, has grown a little bit because of that as well. Um, and um, one unique thing is that, you know, having a physician involved in this nonprofit at the board level who doesn't have a career vested interest in the the funds in the organization has been a crucial aspect as well. It's allowed there to be a little bit of um, oversight uh, of uh, research dollars, um, translation of things that are happening in the medical world with regards to pancreas cancer um, to, you know, and translating that to, to business, to community, to society. Um, and, you know, I think um, COVID has just put a spotlight on, on healthcare, um, physicians, scientists, and, and so many other healthcare workers. Uh, and, and I think that we've been, we've seen that, um, you know, in the world that, uh, that, that people in healthcare can have such a great impact, uh, on society. Um, PCC is a great example of a healthcare organization, uh, having a great impact in, in a field of, in a, such an important field of healthcare. Uh, and we've seen that people in healthcare can have this role, but, um, physicians and, and so many others in healthcare uh, have been uh, frustrated because we've been so bogged down in clinical work all the time. It's worsened during, you know, during COVID. So I think, uh, f I think it's great that uh, it's been, just been a very fortunate and very um, rewarding experience to have um, board involvement here uh, and be able to, uh, you know, to do something, uh, you know, in the healthcare field, um, uh, that's that's more broadly impacting, uh, you know, a uh, an important topic uh, in healthcare, and, and I think that um, you know, uh, stay tuned on this topic. As you said, I, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to start a um, uh, a podcast series exploring impact in healthcare, um, more, you know, in areas that that uh, we may not think about, uh, you know, traditionally. Thank you, Anish. Well, first and foremost, I expect to be a guest on that podcast, so we're going to watch for it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, as we wrap up, I just always want to mention um, Dr. Michael Clarfield. You mentioned him earlier, and he was the chair when I started, uh, but he is also a survivor, and, and I think a 13-year survivor, 14-year survivor at this point. And so there are survivors of this disease, and, and we honor them. So thank Absolutely. you for joining me. Thanks for joining me today, Anish. It's been a great conversation, and thanks for being the inaugural guest. Unapologetic is produced by Lead Podcasting. So special thanks to our Chief Operating Officer, Amanda Jodouin, and our Director of Marketing and Communications, Ali Schofield, who helped make this episode possible. I'm unapologetically yours, Michelle Capobianco. If you enjoyed today's conversation, subscribe to Unapologetic on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. 
You can also subscribe to Pancreatic Cancer Canada's YouTube channel for the video version of this conversation. For more information about us and about the disease pancreatic cancer, please visit us at pancreaticcancercanada.ca. It's a place where you can make a secure donation because donations are how we survive and how the research continues. Thank you.